Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to share a special project with you. I'll be creating a custom diamond wedding band using diamonds that were inherited from a cherished family bracelet. This piece is not just a ring, it's a legacy being passed down through generations. These diamonds have a rich history. They once adorned a bracelet belonging to my client's mother. Now they're finding a new life in this wedding band, complementing an engagement ring that I previously crafted for the same client also using these same sentimental stones. I carefully go through the collection of stones and separate some miscellaneous colored gemstones and I begin sorting the diamonds based on their size and quality. So let's start with the band. This is a plain 14 karat white gold wedding ring that's ready to be transformed. For this project, I'm going to be doing one of my favorite types of stone setting, a bright cut setting. Bright cut setting stones is one of my favorite ways of setting inherited diamonds because it kind of has a vintage feel and look to it and it always complements the diamonds nicely. This is a very time consuming process, but it's a lot of fun. To ensure the perfect placement of each diamond, I have this little trick that I do with beeswax to make sure that the diamonds stay in place. Typically, I use this piece of beeswax to handle gemstones, but in situations like this, I'll rub it on the ring where the diamonds are going to go and then I'll heat up the wax using this lighter so that it melts the wax into place. This creates a sticky coating for the initial stone layout. Now it's time for precision. I place each diamond upside down in the wax to visualize the final design. Once I'm satisfied with their layout, I'll use dividers to precisely mark where to drill for each individual stone. Before I mark where I need to drill the holes, I'm going to need to remove each one of these diamonds individually. It sounds like an easy task, but there's a little bit more to it than just taking them off the ring. These diamonds are about two millimeters wide, so handling them is a challenge in itself. But what's very important is that I set the stones on my workbench in the same exact order that I have them placed on the ring. If I mix up their order, it can mess up the whole entire layout. This is even more vital whenever it comes to more complex style of settings, something that wouldn't be like a straight row like this ring, but it's always good practice to make sure that you keep them in the same order. What I always do is just place them on a piece of upside down scotch tape, and that just makes sure that they stay nice in place and they don't go rolling around my bench. As I'm sorting these diamonds and trying not to drop them, let me remind you that I'm currently doing a one carat diamond giveaway to celebrate my channel hitting 100,000 subscribers. I'm choosing the winner on November 21st, 2023. If you're listening to this video in the future, congratulations to whoever won. Stay tuned to my channel. I plan on doing a lot more giveaways like that in the future. These dividers are really similar to what is also known as a compass you might recognize from like an art class. I adjust their width to the proper dimensions for each individual diamond. I'll carefully walk the dividers up the ring and push into the white gold at each position that I need to drill a hole for the diamonds. Drilling in the white gold requires patience and a steady hand. I use a small ball burr to dimple the gold before drilling, ensuring my drill doesn't slip. Then I meticulously drill holes for each individual diamond, keeping in mind that I'll drill the whole way through the ring for the ease of future cleaning and maintenance. Some rings don't have the holes drilled the whole way through. This allows a lot of dirt to get trapped underneath the diamonds. If the ring is drilled the whole way through, this allows dirt to come out easier whenever being cleaned. The next step in the stone setting process is going to be opening the holes to the proper dimensions for the diamonds. To do this, I use a small rotary tool called a setting burr that's the exact dimensions of the diamonds to open up the holes to their right dimensions. You'll also notice I don't go the whole way through the ring with this tool. That's because I'm creating a seat or somewhere for the diamond to rest on the ring. Now that we have a bunch of holes in the ring, we need to connect the holes by removing metal and creating prongs with the metal that's left behind. To do that, I use these sharp metal blades called gravers. These gravers connect to a handpiece that's attached to an air hammer. I control their speed with a foot pedal that basically just vibrates them very quickly and allows me to cut through the metal. With white gold being such a hard metal, I frequently have to sharpen these. It's really annoying whenever the tips break off of them because then you have to sit here and sharpen them for several minutes. It happens all the time. Platinum's my favorite material to do this type of setting in. It cuts right through like butter. Thank you. 
The most intricate part is setting the diamonds. I use a variety of hand engraving techniques and the air hammer I mentioned for precision. Each cut is crucial, leaving little room for error. This process not only secures the diamonds, but also adds an artistic touch to the band. This is one of my favorite steps of the bright cut setting. Here I'm basically just connecting the outer edge of each hole that I drilled with the graver. As I go along pushing through the white gold, you can see the gold curling up underneath my graver. As a general rule, the longer that curly cue gets, the more stable your hand is. Once all the circles are connected, I'll go through and add some accent cuts that will remove all the gold necessary to create the prongs to secure the diamonds. I'll now do a cutout between each hole. The metal that I leave behind will be the prongs that secure the diamonds. Before I go too deep into the stone setting process, it's important that I go to the inside of the ring and clean up the holes that I drilled. If I don't do this step, it can easily become uncomfortable to wear this ring and cause irritation to the owner's finger. All the engraving is completed and the ring is completely prepped and ready for diamonds. Before setting the stones, I'm going to polish the mounting to make sure all the gold is nice and shiny in the sections where the diamonds will be set. Now I carefully use the beeswax to pick up the diamonds and I make sure that they go into the proper holes. The holes that I drilled previously are cut to basically the same exact diameter of each individual stone. So at this phase, I can usually just push them into place and they'll stick in there without me having to worry about them falling out. The way I set up the prongs in this ring is going to be a shared prong style. To achieve this, I use a flat graver. So this is basically another graver similar to the ones I was using to do all the hand engraving on this piece. But this one's a little bit wider and it's meant for flat cuts. But here I can use it to separate the metal that's between the diamonds and create individual prongs that will hold the stones securely in place. This requires a lot of pressure because white gold's so hard. It's really helpful to have it hooked up to an air hammer. Here you can notice that the graver looks kind of rough and that's mainly just beeswax. I think I had tape wrapped around this before too, so it's kind of like residue. But one thing that's important about the cutting surface of the graver is that it's at a really high polish. Not only does this help sharpen the graver, but basically the surface of the graver that comes in contact with the item that you're engraving on will transfer over. So if the graver is perfectly polished, all your cuts will look perfectly polished. Now that I have those gold sections separated to my liking, I can go around with this beading tool connected to my air hammer and really round out these prongs and make sure that there's proper contact with the material on top of the diamonds. This will hold the stones tightly in place. Here you can see after I've pushed all the gold over top of the diamonds, the prongs look really rounded and it doesn't really look super clean, so I'm going to go through with this other graver and just really do a final cleanup. This is basically just polishing the edges and cleaning up any tool marks. Like right now, it looks kind of rough, but then at the end, you'll see how this extra step really makes a big difference. To give the band a unique finish, I used a mill grain tool to create a coin edge. This is one of my favorite steps. It adds elegance and a vintage feel to the ring. To apply that finish, I have these special mill grain tools. They're made out of stainless steel and there's just this tiny wheel at the end and they make them that are different widths or different notch counts and those will just apply a different mill grain finish. This is one of my favorite processes to watch. It's just neat to watch the, the wheel roll across the ring and apply the finish behind it. Even though it's fun to watch, it is kind of nerve wracking because you have to really make sure you go straight with this because if you roll off the edge, it kind of messes the whole thing up and it's really hard to fix. Now I apply a quick polish to the ring, just making sure everything's nice and shiny, and then it takes a bath in the ultrasonic cleaner for a couple minutes. When it's done cleaning, it's going to get a bath in this solution called rhodium. This is an electroplating solution where a very white metal called rhodium is applied to the outer portion of the ring. That gives the white gold a nice bright white luster. And yes, I know the ring in this video isn't the ring I'm working on currently, but it still does the trick at showing you what it looks like. After final polish and rhodium plating, 
the ring is complete. It's not just a piece of jewelry, it's a symbol of family, love, and continuity. I previously made a necklace for this client, and now I made this wedding band to match an engagement ring I built for her, and she plans on using the pendant and this wedding band to use as gifts to pass on to her two sons in the future. As you can see here, the wedding band matches the engagement ring I built for her perfectly, and they both have the same mill grain finish, and the diamonds are all from the same bracelet that belonged to this client's mother in the past. I hope you've enjoyed this journey as much as I have. Crafting jewelry that carries such emotional value is always an honor. Go ahead and hit like if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more videos on custom jewelry making, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next one.